Greetings, folks. Professor Fiore here, welcoming you to part three of our discussion on the voltage current characteristics in AC circuits for resistors, capacitors, and inductors. So part one was resistors. Part two, we looked at capacitors. And part three here, we're going to take a look at inductors. We want to see what is similar to the performance of capacitor or resistors, what things are different. All right. Uh, in some respects, the uh, inductor is the exact opposite of a capacitor. In some respects, they're very similar, especially when we group them together and compare them to a resistor, right? Caps and inductors are referred to as reactive components, whereas, you know, a resistor is literally a resistive component. Okay, so we are going to go through the same sorts of things. We're going to change the amplitude of the generator, right, the input signal. We're going to see what happens to the, to the current and voltage. Um, we're going to change the frequency. We're going to change the wave shape. We're going to change the value of the inductor. See what ends up coming out of this whole thing. We're going to start off with this current generator. I'm going to use a current generator here instead of using a voltage generator like we did in the uh, other two videos. So this is set up for a 1 milliamp peak at 1 kilohertz. And we've got 158 millihenry coil here, conveniently chosen, as that'll give us a reactance right, at 1 kilohertz of J1000 ohms. Right. Not exactly, but close enough for our purposes. So we're just going to energize this circuit, figure out what the voltage is, compare that to the current, do some changes, see what we get. All right, so let's start off with just a little reminder here of what's going on with our inductor as far as the voltage current characteristic. Um, we know that voltage is equal to the inductance times the rate of change of current. So we're not using Ohm's law per se here. Uh, we can use a sort of a variation on Ohm's law if we're talking about a single frequency sine source, doing the same thing with a capacitor. So in other words, I can look at this and say, oh, it's a milliamp. This is 1K ohm. A mil times a K, that's a volt. I would expect a volt peak from my 1 milliamp peak. That works fine. Well, at least it should, right? We'll see in just a sec. Um, but things are going to get interesting if we look at non-sinusoidal signals or very complex kinds of signals. All right? Here we go. First, we're going to do a transient analysis. See what we get. All right, so we've got two to four milliseconds here. Two milliseconds total difference. And at one kilohertz, that would give us two cycles. All right, so let's separate these out so we can see them. And up top, we have our current. There's the one milliamp peak, right, that we have uh, specified initially. And in accordance with our sort of Ohm's law sort of calculation, one mil times one K gives us one volt. Looking good. Now, you might think, if you did a quick look, this is what we got with the cap. It is not. Yes, it is true that these two are 90 degrees out of phase. I have a sine wave here, and I have a cosine wave here. So unlike the resistor, where these two things were perfectly in phase, sine and sine, we see a 90 degree out of phase situation. However, with the cap, these were flipped. In other words, um, instead of seeing the, uh, the current over here as a sine, and the voltage as the cosine, we saw pretty much the opposite of that when we looked at the capacitor. Here in an inductor, the voltage leads the current, right? So if you could imagine this kind of coming out like this to its beginning, right? This is an earlier time out here than what we have for the green, which is the current, right? So we see this leading thing. Um, it still does work out to 90 degrees, though, which would make perfect sense. You know, if the, um, if the voltage is proportional to the rate of change of current, here there's a big positive rate of change, right, coming through zero. And look, here's a big positive value for the voltage. Over here, the rate of change is virtually zero, and that's what we see down here, right, zero volts at that time. Coming through zero for the current, that's a big negative rate of change. So what do we wind up with? We wind up with a big negative voltage. And on it goes. 
So this so far looks pretty good and it looks predictable compared to what we've seen before, at least compared to the capacitor. Although, like I said, the phase is opposite, right? So one we would say is plus 90, the other we would say is minus 90. But we still have this kind of quarter cycle relationship between the two of them, okay? Great, now let's go and change one of the many characteristics we can on our source, which would be the amplitude. So let's change this to um, two milliamps. Now, if everything goes according to plan, right, that two milliamps through the 1K should give us two volts instead of one volt. Oops. And separate these again. And sure enough, there's our two volts to match our two milliamps. So that looks pretty good, all right? Um, we might be interested in checking out the XY. Remember for the, uh, the XY plot that we do with the resistor, we just get a straight line, the slope of which indicates the conductance. With a capacitor, we got a circle. So what are we gonna get out of this? So select XY on the post processor, voltage on the horizontal on the X, and then over here on the Y part, we'll put the current. All right, and we'll just call this uh, VI, how's that? Okay, looks like an ellipse, but again, if we line it up so that we have even scaling, right? So there's two units, two units, we get a circle again. So yeah, guess what? It's basically the same thing that we get out of the capacitor. It's because of the 90 degree difference between current and voltage. It doesn't really matter whether it's, you know, the voltage is leading or lagging. The fact that it's 90 degrees is what gives us the uh, perfect circle, all right? Okay, I am going to get rid of that just so that we don't have so quite so much clutter on the screen. All right. Okay, what other things can we do? Well, we can change frequency. All right, I'm going to bring this back to a mill, All right, which remember that original mill got us one volt. And I am going to go to a doubling of frequency. I'll go to two kilohertz this time. So what ends up happening now? Well, the inductive reactance is equal to two pi F times L. So this is a, a direct proportion rather than an inverse relation like we see with the cap. So um, by increasing the frequency, we expect to see a larger XL. Now, because the current is constant, right? Got the constant current source. A bigger XL should give us a bigger voltage. So this one milliamp should give us two volts now. All right, instead of the original one milliamp, one volt. Check it out. And okay, there's our current one milliamp. There's the two volt swing. And of course, at twice the frequency, we have twice as many cycles, but it's still a sine wave, right? It's still a sine wave and it's still out by 90 degrees. So, so far, so good, right? What's next? Well, the next thing to do would be to check out the wave shape, right? So let's try a triangle wave again. And um, I'm gonna get that back to a milliamp and the original frequency, the one kilohertz. Well, you know, what we saw in the resistor was whatever the input shape was, that's what we got for the output shape. In other words, I have a certain shape for the voltage, I have that same exact shape for the current. For the cap, we did not see that, right? Because of this sort of derivative kind of thing with the cap, current is equal to capacitance times the rate of change of voltage across the cap. So we're looking at what the slopes are. In the case of the inductor, it's sort of the flip. This is what I was referring to when I said, in some respects, the inductor and the cap are kind of the exact opposite mirror images. So for the inductor, the voltage is equal to the inductance times the rate of change of current through it, right? So the current and the voltage are sort of swapped here. 
So we now have a nine sinusoidal wave. I've got this triangle wave. You know, the resulting waveform is probably not going to be a triangle wave. Certainly not what we saw in the case of the capacitor. And lo and behold, I see some kind of squarish wave. All right, so here is the input uh, value that we have, the input current, the triangle wave. And here we have the output, right? As I mentioned in the cap uh, video, these little overshoots, these little rings, right? You can actually adjust your analysis parameters down here to minimize that. But in, in many RLC circuits, you will see this. So it's not something that you should get too alarmed about. Partially, this has to do with the time resolution of the simulator right now, what it's set for. But in any case, you know, ideally, you would have um, a perfectly flat square here. Of course, ideally, you'd have a perfect point right here on this triangle wave, too. So nonetheless, we can kind of see what's going on. The important thing is there's definitely a change in shape. So as I said, voltage is equal to the inductance times the rate of change of current. So in this whole span, I'm just going to pick the middle here, in this whole span, the rate of change of current is constant. It's a positive value. It's so many milliamps per second or so many amps per second, whatever it works out to. So because that slope is constant, the voltage should be constant, and that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing just a certain value out here, you know, whatever it happens to work out to. And then, you know, when the signal goes negative, when the current goes uh, like so, right, we're falling in amplitude. That's a negative slope. And during that time period, we see a negative, a constant negative signal. All right, so unlike the resistor, we see a change in shape, which is kind of like what we saw with the uh, capacitor, although it is reversed. Because here we're, we're driving the circuit with a triangle, triangle current, and we're getting a square voltage. In the cap, it was the opposite. We had a triangle voltage, and we got a square current. Right. Again, this idea of, of the uh, capacitor inductor sort of being like evil twins, okay? All right, what's next on the hit parade? Well, let's return this back to uh, our original wave. All right, get back our sine wave where we had a one milli uh, peak there, there and a one kilohertz frequency. Okay, so the last thing to do here really is to monkey with the value of um, the inductor. All right, so let's double up the value of the, of the inductor. That would be 316 millihenries. All right, so what would happen? Well, we know X of L is uh, directly proportional to the uh, frequency and the inductance. So we should get a similar kind of, at least amplitude, that we got when we changed the frequency. All right, so this should give us J2K at one kilohertz, because it's twice the size, right? X of L is two pi FL. All right, so what ends up happening if I have um, twice the X of L? Well, with a constant current source, that should give us twice the voltage, right? Off to the transient. And the next process, of course, is to separate the curves. All right, so there's our one milliamp, and sure enough, there's a two volt peak. And again, sine versus cosine, that part of it is all consistent, all right? Looks fine. Okay, so we're going to go to the post processor now just to see if uh, changing this has altered anything as far as our XY plot, our, uh, our voltage current plot. So, do what we did before. VL will be horizontal, and over here on the vertical will be the current. And maybe we'll just call this VI, for lack of a better name. Create. And look what we have. Right, another circle. It's just that the amplitude is different. All right, so here we got a two. Remember, function x is the voltage. So that's two volts now instead of one volt that we had originally. There's the one milliamp that we have for the source. All right, so that's a similarity as far as the uh, inductor and capacitor are concerned. You still get this perfect circle once you scale it for the current voltage characteristic. All right, beautiful. Well, I hope this series has answered a few questions, but if you have more, 
you know that you can always leave them down in the comments section. And until next time, this is Professor Fiore saying, take care.